Hey everybody, it's Derek Kilmartin from CodeOpinion.com. You can reduce complexity and conditional logic in your domain objects by never allowing it to be in an invalid state. I'll explain by focusing on invariants and show a code example of an aggregate that's always in a valid state. If you're new to my channel, I post videos on software architecture and design, so if you're into those topics, make sure to subscribe. If at any point you find this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. All right, so the example I'm gonna use is of a shipment. And you can think of this in say a food delivery where you have a restaurant where you're ordering from, so you're gonna order, and when that needs to get delivered, somebody's gonna be picking it up from the restaurant and then delivering it to you. So the aggregate that I have here is I have a shipment and then I have two stops, a pickup stop and a delivery stop. So the reality of it is in a more complex domain of this example, you could actually have multiple stops where you have multiple pickup and delivery. So you're essentially you're gonna have a list of stops. Each stop is gonna to need to go through a progression. At first, kind of the default uh, state of a stop is gonna be in transit. Then once some the delivery driver, whoever is picking it up, um, gets at that location at that stop, it's gonna be an arrive state. And then finally, once they actually deliver or pick up um, your actual food, it's gonna be in a departed state. So the kind of the transition of how this would work is we have our first stop, which is gonna be in transit. So it's the second stop, the delivery. And then the first stop is gonna to go to arrived. Then the first stop is gonna to go to departed. The second stop then will go to arrive and departed. So that's actually kind of the normal progression of how a shipment would work. So here are kind of four things that I kind of alluded to explaining kind of the process. The first is that a shipment must have at least two stops. And therein that the first stop must be a pickup, the last stop must be a delivery. And stops must progress in order. So the first stop has to do its progression before the second stop does its progression. You can't make uh, do anything like an arrive to the, to the delivery, the second stop, before you've actually even completed the first one. So it has to go through a certain progression. So these are four kind of invariants that we're gonna work with in our aggregate. I just wanna say thank you to all the members who join my channel. I really do appreciate it. They'll get access to all the source code that I show in my videos. If you're interested in joining, go to my channel, click the join button for more info. So here's my aggregate route, my shipment aggregate route that contains some behavior methods for arrive, pick up, uh, and deliver. And it has a list of stops. So I'm gonna take a look at stop quickly so you can see it. There's my abstract class called stop that has a stop ID, a status, which is defaulted to in transit, an address, a scheduled date time, and a departed date time. Then from there, I actually have two stops that derive from that just to kind of differentiate what they are, which is a pickup stop and a delivery stop. So looking at my shipment aggregate route again, is I mentioned that the shipment has to go through a certain progression, meaning the stops have to go through a certain progression in order. So for example, if you look at my arrive method, the first log piece of logic that I have here is really superficial. It has really nothing to do with my invariance. It's just kind of guarding to make sure that the caller, whatever stop ID that they passed in, that stop actually exists for our aggregate. Now you're gonna have some of this logic that is kind of superficial guard clause type logic, and that's fine. But again, when we're focusing on the invariance of the things that I wanna make sure are in a consistent state, this is the logic that's gonna keep it in a consistent state, is that we're not allowing to do anything to any other stops um, in the future where what's prior to it hasn't completed. So that's what this check is. It's saying this current stop that we're working on has anything before it not completed. If, it, if there is, then let's throw an exception here. So this is the actual invariant that we really care about. If you look at the pickup, it's kind of doing the same superficial logic, which is, does the stop exist? Is the stop actually a pickup? Again, this is superficial. This isn't really related to the actual invariance that I mentioned, uh, related to the stops actually progressing in a particular order. So if we look at the depart method on a stop, we can see we have some logic to check to see if we've already departed, then we can throw an exception. If we're in transit, means we haven't done the arrive state transition yet, so we'll throw an exception. Otherwise, our validation passes, so we can change our state. So the key point to this is that if you're looking at behavior methods that are gonna change state, there's gonna be two aspects of it. There's gonna be the kind of the superficial things that you need to do, but then there's also the invariant checks that you need to perform to make sure that you actually can perform that state transition, making sure you're in a good place so that you can still remain in a good place once you actually do change that state. So I have a test for basically every condition related to doing that state progression 
of your shipment with the stops so that you cannot pick up without arriving or that your uh, you can't arrive if there's non-departed stops before you. Everything I was just mentioning, I have a test for that. But that's one aspect to making sure that you're always in a valid state. So the second aspect to this, which is equally as important, is make sure we start with a valid state. Meaning when we're creating our aggregate route, that we're in a valid state right from the get-go. As I mentioned, that a shipment needs to have at least two stops, a pickup and a delivery. That's the bare minimum, that's a valid state. I didn't have to worry about code in any of my code about that being the case because I expect it to be that way. If it weren't that way, then nothing would work. We would actually never be able to complete our shipment. So starting with a valid state is very important. So let's see how we do that. So I have a couple factory methods that are static methods on my shipment aggregate route, which are creating our aggregate route. This first one we'll look at here just takes a list of stops and it's doing that logic saying if there's less than two stops, then throw an exception because we have to have two, that our first stop must be a pickup, that our last stop must be a delivery. If that works, then we can actually create our aggregate route and we're just passing in what our stops are. So at this point, we know what we're passing into our aggregate route in this private constructor is we're gonna be in a good state. I've actually created another factory just to simplify things to say, give me the pickup, give me the delivery, and I know that we're in a good state at that point. Well, now you may be wondering, well, how do you create and how do you use those factories? And it's likely coming from another aggregate route, a part of the flow of the business process. So if I have an order aggregate route that are, we're deriving where we're actually gonna ship from, again, if we're using food delivery, you've placed an order and that needs to get shipped, you probably have something before an actual shipment that's actually gonna create the shipment. So just my example order aggregate route here, I have that it has the restaurant and the customer, there's methods like pay and cancel the order, but I have a method on here called ship, which I'm gonna be passing the expected pickup, the expected delivery, I add my pickup and my delivery, and then I use that factory. So immediately right from the get-go, I'm kind of creating my shipment based on an order, and we know we're gonna be in a good state because we're using that factory, which is controlling that we're gonna be in a good state right away. So a really common scenario that I see is people wanting to be like in a draft mode where none of the really the invariance or logic applies. They just wanna be in a crud mode where they can build something out but not have any of the rules really affect them. So to illustrate this in my actual example is that if you have food delivery where you have orders and somebody delivering that to you, you're really actually gonna have multiple orders on a shipment. So you have five different people order something from the same restaurant, somebody's gonna go pick that up and then pick up all those orders and deliver them out in one shipment. So you could think of, well, if I don't just turn, I wanna be able to kind of plan that out, build up a shipment, then actually create it. And that's kind of that draft mode to publishing. But that can be a separate thing. That can be a separate model entirely. So what that looks like is maybe you have a plan for a shipment where you're reaching out saying, okay, I wanna take this order, I'm gonna take this order because they're all gonna be finished within the same time frame, and they're getting delivered close to each other. And then from that plan, I'm going to build a shipment using my factory to define all the stops. So there can be this intermediate thing that is kind of this crud in nature that's building up what you actually need. It doesn't need to go from order, from aggregate root to aggregate root. If you have something that's crud in nature, that's kind of like I, like I described, kind of this draft mode where you're building stuff up and working it out, you can go from that to something else as an intermediate step. Having your domain objects in a valid state right from the beginning is really useful. In my example, I don't ever have to question or write code worrying about whether the first stop is gonna be a pickup. It will be a pickup, and the last stop will be a delivery, and there will be at least two stops in my aggregate route. I don't have to question that. I don't have to write code ever concerned if that's not gonna be the case. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.